Hello and welcome to Acme's YouTube channel. My name's Kate for Kay and today we're talking to Dave Bleich from New Orleans. Dave got his start in the industry as a matte painter on films like Titanic and The Fifth Element and he now art directs and leads the visual development for animated features such as Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and Hotel Transylvania plus many more. Today Dave is going to talk to us about how he got started and will let us in on exactly what a colour script artist does. So hi Dave, Hello. welcome. Uh, it's What's so up? great to speak to you today. Right on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's good to it, it's good to see you and thanks for having me on. Yeah, oh, it's really, really exciting and I can't wait to talk to you a bit about your career pathway and later on we'll we'll um, get you to take us through some of the project breakdowns that you've worked on. But first of all, sure. um, uh, you've been called the light the Lord of Light and Colour. <laughs> Um, your roles have included um, creative director, art director, colorist, visual effects artist, designer, and matte artist. But uh, you started out as a matte painter and um, on films like The Titanic back in the mid 90s. So I wanted to just get a sense of where you began, um, what you studied, and, and I guess sure. how, did, how, did you, how did you begin? Well, <laughs> how did I begin? Um... I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to find out that I really enjoyed doing art at a young, young age. Um, and um, I really uh, found uh, some friends who guided me and had some teachers and instructors who were uh, very influential, uh, especially in high school at the time, and helped, helped push me in that direction. Um, so I applied to School of Visual Arts in Manhattan. I grew up outside of New York City. And um, I applied to, to School of Visual Arts, also known as SVA, and I got in. And it was a four-year program, and it just kind of breaks it down. The first year, you know, you, you study, you know, the, the, the foundational principles of learning art, you know, drawing, six hours of drawing, painting, sculpture, composition, perspective. You just kind of learn all this stuff. Found in my junior year, uh, I realized that I wasn't probably going to be jumping into the world of illustration and doing magazine covers and stuff. So I really had to start thinking about like, how do I continue to work, uh, support myself, and at the same time, work on my illustration career? Well, I decided to take at the time what they called desktop publishing. It's, it's kind of a, a term that we don't say anymore, but basically for layouts and magazines. You know, I was learning Quark at the time. And I took a Photoshop 2.0 class. Stress. I remember that. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And uh, I was like, oh, okay. So I scanned some images and I had some friends of mine who were doing this type of work already. Uh, I took Photoshop class and then I was like, well, this is interesting. So I would scan in photos that I've taken um, with a camera, not with my phone, <laughs> and, and, and scan these in. And then I would do from, I would scan those into the computer. I'd play with them in the computer a little bit and manipulate them really early on in Photoshop, print them out just on standard paper, you know, mm -hmm. standard, because I didn't really know, and we didn't know at the time. And then I would take those and I would kind of glue them to illustration board and I would paint on them as well and do a lot of mixed media collage with oil paints or acrylics or inks and really just started to find a passion for this. It was a, just a new area, of, a, a new tool set of working. So I was taking all this information that I've had and was, was ingrained in me and I've learned and I saw it out and it's like, I'm going to now start applying to this. Now I really started to enjoy this. So I enjoyed it so much is that I started to think about what about doing a master's, what about getting a master's degree in computer graphics? I'm not an engineer, a mathematician. Again, I'm, I'm an artist. I draw, um, but School of Visual Arts had one. Pratt in Brooklyn had another one, but I wanted to get out of Manhattan and luckily Syracuse University had a, a computer graphics program in the film and, uh, and video department. Uh, I got in, there was about 11 of us who were in this little small program. I don't know anything about computer programming. Uh, this is all new to me. I'm in a class with um, artists who are Excel. One came from architecture background, one from a music background. So it was wow. quite, mm -hmm. quite a, a, a unique group of artists. Some were from the United States. There was, a, there was one who was from Japan. There was one from the Middle East. And we all just kind of got together and we would meet and start to develop uh, our artwork, you know, and during a, the course of the semesters. So when those four year, actually it was a three year program. I stayed for four just because I, I was working with an animation company up there. 
three years I was there, I learned about image processing. Uh, image process like a sequence of images. I got exposed to 3D. I was playing with electric image at the time. I was playing with Adobe Premiere early parts. So I was learning how to edit. So I was getting more information of like, these are all these different avenues you can do. Of course, I was getting the, the conversation from mom and dad, like, what are you going to do with this? So I'm like, I don't know. I might go teach. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out, you know. Um, I got lucky uh, because Jurassic Park happened. Once Jurassic Park happened and Terminator 2, then I realized this is an avenue that I can explore because it's a lot of fun. And this is a brand new field, 1992, 93 now. It's just starting to explode. And they don't have the artists who can handle this work. Now, the machines, the technology wasn't there yet. So I graduated. I got received my master's of fine arts degree in computer graphics. And I, I was doing 2D animation for a company in Syracuse, working on games like King's Quest and Torrance Passage. So I was, since I had an illustration background and I can draw and I had a very, um, uh, I can work with fine line and stuff. I was doing all the final line drawings for this game and then it would be scanned to the computer. Fast forward, I was still applying to companies like Industrial Light Magic, Pixar, Digital Domain, Rhythm and Muse. I really wanted to work for this company called Colossal Pictures, but it just never worked out. And I ended up getting a job with Digital Domain in Venice, California. And um, one of the first, uh, I got hired in their new media division. And they were, at the time, they were developing games and stuff. It was a new avenue, but it never really went anywhere. And we all got transferred over into features and commercials. So the first feature I've worked on was Fifth Element, Luc Besson's Fifth Element. So pretty lucky that was my first film. I could, yeah. My first map painting was, yeah. was the scene in the, right when they're in New York City and they're at the McDonald's. This is my very first map painting. This was for the Fifth Element. Amazing. Um, so uh, this is... The, this is the highest res I can find. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is um, just to show you like from here, like this section right here and forward mm. all the way to here, it was all practical models. So those are built in a model shop. So everything from here back was all map painting and then the cars were all added CG. So that was like old school mm. time and it was a lot of fun and I couldn't be more thrilled to have an opportunity to work on a film like this when you first, as your first job, as my first assignment. I've got opportunities then after that, that parlayed into working um, because of my back, my technical background, as well as my art background for foundation, I got to start working on the early pre-production of Titanic. So I was working with, again, these are very technical people. Some have like engineer backgrounds, computer science backgrounds. Mm. And um, I was helping out, like doing some painting and doing some compositing work and doing some rough 3D work, you know, pretty advanced for, what my experience was but I was learning and they they were teaching me at the same time so I worked on Titanic for about two and a half years pre-production production and post-production post-production I guess like marketing magazines and stuff like learning how like you know when you want to get something that's going to be a poster the size of a building how big is that going to be and learning all these little things and these tricks mm. from there I worked on a few other projects with with with, with Sony and then it not Sony with digital domain. And then I eventually moved over to Sony Pictures Imageworks to do visual effects. Um, worked on films like Hollow Man, Castaway. Um, now in 2007, 2006, Sony opened up a division, an animation division called Sony Pictures Animation. And they strictly do animated films, but they develop animation, animated films. We call them SPA. Spa is pretty much like it's a team of artists and writers and producers, and they just developed the work. Imageworks at the time would work with Spa, and they would do all the production, the animation, the effects, the lighting, the characters into the scene. So they would take their visual effects pipeline and augment it to the world of what Spa needed. And I was very intrigued by Spa because I've always enjoyed animation. I just never knew a path how to get in there. But I've always loved the, the you know, developing images, you know, and, and, and it kind of goes back to like working and observing and I really love that part of it. But I saw some of these artists and what they were doing and I was so intrigued. I was like, oh, I got to figure out how to get in there. So a good friend of mine, um, Andy Harkness and Mike Kerensky were very patient and they 
answer a lot of my questions. I was like that little kid, like, how do you do this? Why do I get in there? You know? <laughs> and, um, I started, uh, doing some, um, you know, some moonlighting, you know, they would give me assignments like, this is what you need to do. Like, we're going to give you a drawing. Now you're going to do like a painting, what it's going to look like of a character or, or a storefront or like this, you know, temple piece, you know, like, sky and these characters and I would do them and I would just keep showing them and showing them until eventually I got enough pieces and I could show the, the head of the department and I would like to do this and I got the opportunity to go work for Sony Pictures Animation. Before that I was also doing matte painting work at Sony Pictures Image Works so it might get confusing jumping back and forth. So I'm just going to go spot. I'm going to go Imageworks. Okay. I was at Imageworks and I was a map painter and eventually became a map painting supervisor. I worked with teams, you know, I've, I've, I've supervised, you know, people from probably from about four artists all the way up to 13 artists at, at, at some times. Mm -hmm. I worked on um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs one as the map painting supervisor, but I was also fortunate enough to work as the, as a visual development artist um, for spot. When you enter a, an entry level position with Sony Pictures Animation Spa is um, generally you're gonna come in either as a visual development artist or a character designer, maybe a, a, a junior character designer. They usually probably have somebody on the beginning. Every production's different. They use, they might hire freelancers and bring people in only for a few months. Um, but there's general, there, there's like a general core of artists that are there at all times. Um, as visual development artists, then there's art directors and then production designers. There's an ebb and flow from productions to productions. Some directors like to work with certain production designers and this or that, but there's so much talent and so many wonderful people there. So from there, I went working on Cloudy One. Uh, I developed a relationship with the production designer, a good friend of mine, Justin Thompson. And, um, you know, and, kind of like talk to him about like taking this 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 next stage of where i can go and he gave me the confidence you know that you think you can be an art director on the next film you know it's in the color sense you know i never really was aware of that you know he kind of brought it he kind of mentioned it and the the executive producers and the director were kind of the same way they were like you have an interesting take on, on, on color and i was like oh okay you know just kind of do what i thanks yeah. you know <laughs> uh, uh, all right and um so then when Cloudy 2 came out and I was offered to be the art director, at first I was like, really? I don't know. I've never done this before. And I guess I'll say, okay. And, you know, at first I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll just kind of use my tricks and bluff my way through it until mm -hmm. I figure out how I do this, you know? It, kind of the case of a lot of things. You, know, you just kind of like, you accept these things and you really don't know what's happening until like you're in it. Like, I don't know how to do this, but... Justin was such a good mentor and he's such a dear friend of mine, you know, it was the first time like I really felt like it was very collaborative. And it's like, and I think that's what I, I loved about working on that project is actually I was feel if you're working as a team and usually in post-production, you are working as a team, but you, you all get your assignments and you do your painting and you do your comps and you do your effects work, whatever. And it all gets funneled to the compositor. But, but with Cloudy 2, it was like I was working with Justin and Craig Kelman was the character designer, both amazing people. And they just gave me so much confidence. And they really, uh, they, they, they gave a sense of value of what I can bring to the show. And that just kind of propelled me to take chances, you know, and, and start really learning. Um, so when I was there, when I was working on Cloudy 2 as the art director, I kind of started to kind of develop a color scheme. I had to, what, you know, so one of the things you must, you shouldn't must do it, it's encouraged that you do when you do a film, an animated feature film, is a thing called a color script. You know, a color script is the best way I can explain it is that for a film, you have a composer who does a musical score for a film that's based off the, the script of, of the movie. Um, and as for a color script, I've always felt that that's more like a visual score for a film. So what I am doing is that I'm finding a palette that, that follows the emotional beat of the entire film. Um, and keep in mind, stories change, details change, but the foundation of the stories are always there. So the foundation of the color script is always there. So it's flexible. As long as we have a path on where we're gonna go, perfect. 
What you never want to do is have a film that's going to be super flat, meaning it's all going to be really bright or it's going to be really dark. You know, it, you want to take the viewer on a journey. You want, them, you want to make them feel like they're participating in this film and you want to engage them visually. I was going to show you here, this was the color script for Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. So this is oh, the film they are wow. This is the color script for the movie. So we talk about color scripts. These are these little, right. little postcards or stamps, you know, just, uh, you know, they've made different terms, but I kind of like call them swatches, you know, mm -hmm. for the film, you know, just kind of throw them out there and see what lands, you know, and I can kind of show you kind of close up. And the, th and the thing about with color scripts and these images, they're really not, the, the, the drive is not to make high-end detail paintings or illustrations. That's gonna come later. What you're trying to do is express the palette and how it's gonna flow for that time in, it, mm -hmm. in that scene. You might have seen color scripts where everything's like all green, you know, and they just kind of, they just flow, they're all blue and they transfer into something that's orange or something. Nothing wrong with that. I have no right. problem with that. I think they all work. Um, that's probably what their assignment was or that's what, you know, whatever it is, that's how they work. Right. So what I'm doing here is that I am just trying to give you an idea of what this particular moment in this particular scene is what we're looking for as far as color. How do we kind of express the, what the lighting could be, what the, what the mood can be. Mm. I'll just kind of, I can zoom in on a few things here. It's like, this is like where Flint was walking out with Barb at the time. And I really wanted this feeling of this uncomfortable feeling he was leaving and going into, going to the dark side, you know, <laughs> so mm -hmm. just kind of like this, like this really kind of swampy green, mm -hmm. um, hotel, you know, apartment hallway, you know, or driving through San Francisco or the Bay, yeah. but just really just kind of playing with the overall palette and how fun it is. Like with who he met, berry for the first time like follow the red dot you know the strawberry right you know? and these are just all like different pieces you know running through like maybe it's all broccoli trees just keeping things fun you know and, <laughs> yeah. you know um there's a dome where he's fishing with pickles so you're just trying to get an idea of what's what's happening here like things are going bad you know things can be fun and charming and they can still be bright and colorful you know there's right. reasons and there's choices for these things that are made um and what i'll do is i'll explain this even further let me just close this image so is this so what I, you were referring to as your kind of roadmap um for the emotional beats of the film that kind of guide this you? is the, f the this is where it ends up Right. These are all these different beats you're going to do. And you probably, I probably don't maybe double the amount of these. Like we just kind of take some out. So it's a lot of, you know, a lot of painting, a lot of starting over, like try this, try this, try this. How does this work? Maybe this doesn't work right here. A lot of this is pretty subtle. You don't realize it, but when you start looking at film and television, you know, some of your favorite films, you start to look at the lighting, you start and then you start to look at the colors and how they're actually pushing you and making you feel when you're watching something. For example, when you're watching something that's chaotic, like maybe a big fight scene from a Marvel movie or something, and notice how bright it is and notice the colors that pop, you know. Mm -hmm. Notice a, a film like or, or notice a moment where something is sad or dour. It's you know, it's like, okay. Notice that the feeling that you're getting there, it's like it's not too bright. You know, they're trying to bring that into you and engage you into there. So that's the job um the okay. the, the trick it go ask, ahead sorry um so do you sort of find that uh, you know you have to that there's a lot of color theory in terms of rules and you need to really stick to those or do you do you play around with those those rules a little bit like <laughs> is is bright always happy and is dark always blue you know and and down um at first i did when i first started doing uh, when i first researched uh, how to approach the uh, color script. Um, I talked to Andy. Uh, I, t I talked to I talked to Mike, and I talked to s some other art directors. And what I found is that they all work differently, and there is no there is no straight answer. One art director might just work primarily uh, from a reference of uh, film photography, or one might work just from paintings. You know, one mm -hmm. might just be winging it. There are, you know, there are. Um, they call it like color theories and things that you can follow, you know, 
different pattern, uh, what do you call it, different charts, like complementary palettes and, and, right. angles, and, and, and angles pa palettes, and they all just keep triad and all these things just keep going. You can do that, um, and, that and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I don't, for me, how I work, I don't really think that way um, because I think that limits me where I'm working. Um, it's safe. It, they, they work. If you look at a lot of films, a lot of animated films, even television, you can definitely see there's probably using maybe three colors for this entire scene. You know, right. it's rich. It balances. It works just fine. I've never actually really th went out and said that this scene is going to be red with purple and a little bit of, you know, a little bit of orange or something. I, I, mm -hmm. Because I can't think of like how I'm going to put there. I, when I f look and do my research for what's happening in the script and when I, when I make my notes, I try to tend to find out, okay, what appeals to me at this moment? And I make notes of based off of like, it's, do I feel it's light or dark? Do I feel it's contrast, you know, very contrasty, not a lot of contrast. Is it saturated? And I, uh, I have some examples and I'll show you just kind of like it'll show like how I chart out a film. And then from there, I start looking at research. And this is, I think, is the most pivotal time for me is that I start finding references. And my images can be, you know, uh, images from film, fashion, food, abstract, art. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. And I find that that works for me. It doesn't work for everybody, but that's kind of where my brain goes into because I'm looking at color. I'm not looking at like, there might be some references in those images for lighting or staging and things like, this is what I was thinking. Right. I read a script, I'll make a note. I'm thinking this film, like maybe Goodfellas or a Wes Anderson film, Ferris Bueller, whatever. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah, yeah. But there are artists that will work primarily in certain palettes. So right. that's not, the, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. I would okay. say, trust your instinct um and go from there and see what happens okay and so how much do you uh i guess have to work with the art director if you're not the art director i suppose um and the director mm -hmm. to convince them of your your approach to the to this <laughs> um to the color direction for a film and um and and how much does that get dictated to you um, well, when I start on a film, it, it varies what time I come on. Usually it's pretty early in the pre-production process. So the script has been written. They have some storyboard artists already on, on the team who are boarding some scenes or some, some, some key sequences. Um, so I will either if I'm the art director uh, or not, but it's, let's just say if these last couple of films, I, I, I'm just one of the artists. You know, my job is to focus on color and lighting. So I'm coming on working I, I will work with the art director i will work with the production designer and the director or directors if mm. it's if it's uh if it's something like that and initially i'll sit down and i'll get the script and they'll pitch me like moments i what i'm doing is i'm interviewing them i'm interviewing what their key moment is for the film what are they passionate about what's you know because what happens is i found out through i've done about eight of these already you know, films what I find is that you got to get everybody in a room. You just got to interview and talk to them about what do they feel strongly about? Is it a certain sequence and a certain color? Because the production designer might have an idea. The art director might have an idea. The DP might have one, a director to produce it. There's so many voices that are coming in. So it's best to get them all in a room, take your notes, ask these questions and go back and do your work. And you come back and you show them and you have an open dialogue, very collaborative experience. I prefer to work that way. I think it's the most successful. Um, but the big thing you have to remember is that this isn't my work. I'm hired to do this work. So right. they want changes. I do it. You know, this right. isn't my personal artwork, so I don't take offense to anything. Um, but what I do do, if anything, when I'm in a meeting, if I feel passionate about something myself, I'll, I'll explain to them and I, I don't get uh, defensive, but what I do is that I explain to them my choices and I defend my choices. There's a big difference there saying if somebody says, well, this doesn't work or, or I don't like this, and you can say, well, you don't know what you're talking about. Right. What you should be saying and explaining and conveying and articulating is, um, you know, why you made these decisions, and why you made these choices and how you think they're beneficial for the film. They may work, they may not. I've right. had a director say, I hear what you're saying. I think it's great. I love the passion, it's bold. I just want to go this way. Right. You know, I've had on the 
on a film where it's like, all right, I think you're selling me. Well, let's see how it goes, you know? Right. And, you know it, it just varies, but they do respect that. And they want people to come in with ideas and mm. help them problem solve and mm. help them lift their film to another level. They, they don't, I think you need to, like when you, when you get these assignments, you want to bring the idea and help it and make the film better. Um, you don't really want to just get like, well, you wanted it to be blue, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so. like, make these decisions and also when you're making color choices i found is that you know somebody's going to ask you why is that scene you know pink don't because don't just say like, decide to make it pink have a reason why you're making that choice so you, you know, and that's you know so you so you defend that and so have you done a lot of work when you were needing to develop new skills and particularly i guess in different technologies to what you're already sort of up to speed did you have to do a lot of work outside of your working hours to kind of be able to come back and go, well, actually now I can work in, you know, Maya or, mm -hmm. I, you know, I've learnt. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I had to take on the responsibility of that. I think that's the one of the things I've learned so much uh, going to art school was art schools can, you know, at that time we didn't have the information that we have now. So I had to go research it and find this stuff. I had to go find the magazines of the books and talk to find these artists and spend time and put those hours in they're, they're just going to give me the tools. Um, it's my job to, have, to learn and how to apply them. Just because I go to a school and they give me a degree and here you go, you know, and now you're going to go get a job. It's, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. I still, those, those fundamentals still have, still are instilled in me today. So I always, in my mind, I'm always continuing to learn something, uh, try new uh, ways of working, learn new software. And, you know, continue to draw, continue to observe, try different things like maybe with collage or, um, you know, try things that are, that are outside your safety, outside your safety zone, but do those on your own time. You don't want to be doing that on the time when you're getting assigned a job and you're sitting there trying to figure out <laughs> like how I want to play with Maya and you're getting paid for it. Meanwhile, they're hiring you to do a job. So right. I kind of do this as like what I call as like a lab work. I put some, I do that stuff and I'll, I'll do like, I'm exploring ideas. There's no original concept in mind. I was like, how can I play with, how can I get this kind of look? Say for example, like uh, an old dye transfer, like a William Eggleston feel of a painting, you know, mm -hmm. how can I do that in Photoshop? And I'll start figuring this out and I'll start to learn like a, you know, like a technicolor look for, for a painting I just did. Um, and I'll just kind of play around. And so I do this thing called lab work and I'll put up on Instagram or Twitter and just things I just, you know, always continue to learn and, and keep striving to be better. Because eventually the stuff you're doing there will be implemented in your current work process and you'll be able to solve problems faster and you'll be able to give ideas at the same time to help out with the production. Right. Okay. Um, so how do you work differently to others? And um, I guess, does, does the process matter for you or is it always kind of the final product? What, like, how, do, how does that impact you? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the process. Um, I think uh, because I've always been in, I've always enjoyed the process of, of filmmaking and image making. I guess I go back to image making, but it's filmmaking. It, it varies. It could be the process of writing or the process of sculpture or photography, whatever. I love the final image. I love where it's complete. We always as artists, like, is it done? I don't know. You know, that's one of the things we all struggle with, but when it's done, it's great, you know? Um, but the, I think for me, the process is like the, the achievement of getting to that level, like figuring out in your brain, like, okay, if I take this layer and I do this, or if I draw this or I make this paint stroke over here or whatever, there's a part in the process where my brain, I just, you, you kind of just kind of tune out. You know, some say you go under, you know, you, you just kind of fall into it and your brain just kind of get into a zone and all of a sudden, you know, like, what, what just happened? You come up for air and you have this image and you're just like, wow, I just did that. That's amazing. Holy. Wow. And then, um, so I've always found like, you know, some will call it like the process of the hunt or whatever it is. It's just that when you get to that spot, if it's it's amazing and you don't even realize you're doing this drawing and your brain is just off in another world <laughs> yeah so excellent um and what are the challenges like in terms of um your role working with the team what, what are the challenges and what are the personal 
qualities that you've sort of evolved the most when you're working with the team on a production? Uh, the, I think the big thing is to know you're working in a team. Um, I'm, I'm thankful to work with a team of artists that are just very open and very sharing. And I rely on them, you know, and so these artists, they're, they're incredible artists. I work with some guys that can draw these rooms upside down with their eyes closed or paint these things. You know, they're just incredible people. And I think I, I take my, the opportunity to learn from them and what they're thinking and what they're doing and vice versa. And I think that just makes the whole project better. Um, but I think the big thing is like to realize and remember that you are on a team and um, you have a job to do. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to help you out. If you're having a problem or, you know, we're all in this together. We're all looking to make the film better, the idea better. Right. There's no personal imagery here. Nothing is um, precious. We just want to make sure that we try to get all to the same level. And, I'm working with artists who are younger than me, some of them are older than me, and we rely on each other. And I think the, the one thing that, you know, th that's always the hard part is that once the film's done, it's like this little team you're with for the last year and a half. Huh? You know, we all go away and then we, maybe we come back together on another project later on, but sometimes we don't, you know? But yeah. I, I, I like the idea, the main thing uh, to summarize, if any, that it's like, we all have a voice put into the film and it definitely shows so we make a great movie but i also make some some friendships and uh, along the way and i look forward to the next time i work with them well thank you so much it's been so great to talk to you about your career oh, pathway you're and you. i'm really looking forward to going through a project breakdown in our next chat okay fantastic thank you so much i really appreciate thanks it. dave okay bye well, join us next Monday as Dave steps us through his colour scripting process for making Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And for more insights into industry professionals, make sure you catch the rest of our behind the screen series and also our running free series on the Acme YouTube channel.